<laughs> so you guys excited? I guess. Yeah. I'm scared than anything. <laughs> yeah, it's a little scary, but it'll be great. Hey guys, so this is AC and D Chat Chords, and we are here with a bunch of special guests for the Iranian New Year. Everybody can sound off and introduce yourselves to our listeners out there. Yeah, I'll go first. Uh, sure. My name is Azam Hul, and um, I come from Desfoul, which is a city in southern um, Iran, about 150 miles north of the Persian Gulf. Oh. And I've been in Boise since 1997. Wow, 1997, awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, my name is Roshan Rogani, and uh, I am half Persian, half American. Um, my father comes from a city called Esfahan, which is the third largest city in Iran. And I suppose that's all. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And uh, uh, let's My name is Arvin Farid. I'm um, originally from a city called Shiraz in Iran. If you're a wine drinker, you know what Shiraz is. Ah, I love wine. And, uh, I uh, moved to the United States in, um, on February 6, 2001, and moved to Boise on March 3rd, 2008. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Uh, uh, and I'm uh, an assistant professor in the civil engineering department at Boise State University. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, just yesterday we had, our, from my show, I had someone on that was a computer science major, so that was a lot of fun. So um, you guys are here tonight, today, tonight, huh? Today to talk about the Iranian New Year. So tell everyone what that's about, like what when it happens and all the special festivities. Um, it is a celebration of spring. The Iranian New Year is called Nowruz, which means New Day, and it's the first day of um, spring. It officially begins. Uh, spring begins on um, March twentieth, which Ooh. is. Uh, um, Wednesday uh, coming after next and uh, the moment of equinox is 5.02 a.m. Boise time. <laughs> so uh, it's a celebration of spring, a rebirth of the earth, uh, and renewal of life. Um, it's an ancient um, uh, uh, celebration and it dates back to at least 2,500 um, years. Some trace it back to um, perhaps more than 5,000 to the Sumerian um, celebration of the ancient gods. So that's uh, the gist of the, the it and then of course there are many many traditions that go along with it. So, um, oh. Very cool. Um, one, <laughs> one other piece of information and I, uh, is uh, uh, winter solstice used to be celebrated as, as the beginning of New Year by many, many cultures, uh, including Persians. And that was simply because that was the day or the night before uh, when the days start getting longer and longer. That's why they called it Yalda or, uh, or birthday of light in a way. Birthday and it was celebrated by, by many, many cultures. And some even believe that uh, Jesus was born in summer, but uh, Yalda or uh, January 24th is celebrated uh, to, as a symbol of uh, Jesus' birth. Uh, but um, some believe that uh, Zoroaster, which is the prophet that brought Zoroastrianity to life uh, some uh, close to 5,000 years ago, uh, it sort of invented or shifted uh, Persian New Year from Yalda, winter solstice, to spring equinox. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a famous uh, poet called Ferdowsi mm -hmm. uh, who lived in Iran close to, I would say, 500 um, AD, um, after the Persia was conquered by Arabs. Uh, he didn't want to say that Persian New Year was invented by Zoroaster, so he said it was invented by a mythical king called Jamshid. And ever since four or five thousand years ago, it's been celebrated in, in Iran as Persian New Year called Nowruz, as Azam mentioned. And uh, it's celebrated uh, all over the world by whoever follows the Persian culture. Uh, in Tajikistan, Afghanistan, uh, South or, or even Southeast Asia, and uh, some, Pakistan. Uh, yeah, Pakistan, uh, uh, some even some parts of Turkey and and uh, pockets in in Europe, 
in Africa and uh, different religions uh, uh, and uh, followers of different religions sort of uh, celebrate that too, Muslims, Zoroastrians, obviously, and Baha'i, uh, and many, many others. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Um, so are there any parallels with um, uh, the new year that kind of maybe uh, some people in America might be more familiar with? Like, do you guys count down to anything special or have special mm -hmm. toasts and re resolutions? Oh, there are many, many th traditions associated um, with it. Um, of course, like all other holidays, uh, it involves family and um, it, several weeks before the, the beginning of the new year, there is um, spring cleaning. Ah. So, <laughs> spring cleaning. Yeah, so in Iran, we call it Khanetakhani, which means shaking the house. That means just like tossing out everything that's old, bringing in the new, um, people buy new clothes and people get ready for um, f for the new year, um, and um, they settle that, they um, forgive um, and forget, so to speak. It's just a Aww. beginning of uh, a clean slate, essentially. People um, um, uh, pay back what they owe, so they start anew. It's just a time for um, for renewal. Um, there are, uh, there is a, my, most favorite part of this holiday, and this is a, a celebration that I that I have um, had with me ever since I moved to the United States every year, is the setting of what we call the haft scene, um, which means, um, haft means seven, scene is um, letter S in Farsi. And um, it's setting a table with seven uh, specific items um, on it, each with a uh, <coughs> a, a, a symbolic significance. Um, one thing that we put on is spring grass, and Aww. that is um, uh, the color green in Farsi is called sabs, and um, the spring grass is called sabze. So several weeks before the um, the Iranian New York, New York begins, we um, make um, this uh, spring sprout, essentially. Different families um, grow different kinds of seeds. In my family, we grow wheat, and so um, you start about three weeks before um, New Year, and by the time New Year comes, um, your grass is about four or five inches tall, and it looks gorgeous. And you tie a nice ribbon around it, and you set it on this table, and there are other items that go, again, that begin with the, the sound of S. There is um, serke, um, which is symbolic. It's, it's vinegar, red vinegar. Um, it's symbolic of patience, um, old age, and wisdom, and immortality. Um, there is sombol, uh, which is hyacinth, and symbolic of beauty of the earth. Um, there is um, senjed, which is, which is the dried um, fruit of the lotus tree, and legend has it that um, people fall in love uh, in spring <laughs> under the lotus tree. Nice. So it's symbolic of love. Um, there is um, seed, which is apples, and uh, symbolic of health. Um, seed, which is garlic, and that's symbolic of medicine. There is um, samanu, which is a pudding that, um, that is um, uh, wheat sprouts that's um, cooked over several days and it becomes really pasty and s very very sweet and that is symbolic of sweetness of life um, what else am I forgetting <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then um, so other things also in addition to that are set on this table goldfish um, that's my favorite goldfish <laughs> a lot of people use goldfish, goldfish. goldfish. Right. so is it like yeah. in a little bowl or do you guys cook the goldfish no 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 no, <laughs> no, no, no. It it's alive <laughs> <laughs> it's alive and swimming around and actually at least like within my family in Iran and also at a lot of the events like at the end the kids are kind of fighting over who's going to get the goldfish that are in the bowl. So. Aww, that's so cute. I love yeah. goldfish. It's symbolic of life. 
Life. Nice. Oh, that's that's good that it's alive then, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it would be yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah, and there's cooked fish, by the way, on the table that people eat as a traditional yes, yes. food. Oh, okay. But, yeah. but the goldfish, uh, that, that's mm-hmm. any fish that people like. But the goldfish is part of the tradition that originally came from China. Right. It, 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 uh, fish in Persian is mahi, like mahi mahi. Uh-huh. It it's, uh, it's, uh, doesn't start with the letter S in Persian. Uh-huh. Uh, but... Uh, but um, uh, it 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 sort of came from Chinese. I mean, Persia was obviously the, um, tr- traded, and it was uh, the Silk Road, and and all different uh, trades and cultures affected Persia and got effect mm-hmm. effects from Persian culture, and and um, the goldfish is one of those. Oh, nice. So. Um Roshan. Roshan. Sorry about that. So Roshan, what uh, what do you do to celebrate? Um, well, first of all, she mentioned shopping. I always <laughs> like to get shopping. new clothes um, at Nurse. But another big thing, um, which this is something that in our family, be, well, my family is Muslim, and um, in Islam, one of the pillars of Islam encourages you to give to others in charity. And so this is a time of the year, even though it's not necessarily a, a religious holiday, it's a time of the year that um, a lot of my family members really encourage renewing yourself through giving to others. And so being able to, um, you know, like she said, wiping the clean slate or having a clean slate and really starting that by helping others. So um, oftentimes uh, you'll see people doing things for others now, whether that's cooking for elderly people, which is also something that we do later on in the year, um, or whether it's, uh, you know, donating your old clothes, uh, going out and actually giving of your time, no matter how small or large your contribution is, a lot of people like to practice some sort of charitable um, giving within, uh, within this period to start their year out. And to me, that's probably, in addition to the parties <laughs> and, and spending time with the people you love, um, that's my favorite part. Um, but I just wanted to say that th- the reason why Nuru's is so important to me and why it's my favorite holiday is because I love the traditional New Year, but I never really got into it because it kind of felt like this time of the year when I was so tired and, and you know, winter, it, it's winter, it's cold outside, and to me, Nuru's is so special and it's such a different, it's such an important holiday because there is this renewal going on around you. And I actually find that although my traditional um on New Year's Day, uh, or I guess you would call it American New Year's, traditional New Year's, <laughs> I have a hard time keeping my resolutions oh, uh, yeah. because, especially working out, because I don't want to go outside. I don't. Oh, I know. But when it comes to Persian New Year, I have a much easier time keeping my resolutions. And I think it's because everything <laughs> around me is renewing. And for me to go and work out when it's sunny outside, and, and we, I personally, we, our family always has animals around. and animals are having babies at that time of year and all kinds of things that you see around you. It's so much easier to keep your resolutions and want to be a better person and be excited about the new year um, when it is at this time. So. Oh yeah, that's awesome. I had never, <clears throat> I'd never considered that, but I, I think I can definitely understand that because like, uh, I know I definitely slowed down in the winter and we have our winter, mm-hmm. uh, our New Year's in January. And you know, signifies the start of the year, but what a crappy time to start the year. It's yeah. snowy, and oh, for all of you people out there who love snow sports, I know you're probably going to hate me for saying this, but it's snowy and cold, and I just want to curl into a little ball and sleep. Yep, that's, <laughs> that's what I did this year. And nice. then next week when we have our new year, or on, on the 20th and 21st when we have our new year, it will be the exact opposite. I'll be out and active not only in my community through charity work, but also, you know, with the other Persians, with my American friends, and uh, just on my own. So it, it's, it's a good time of the year to have a new year. Oh, now, now awesome. you asked uh, about the, um, the com- commonalities and what's common between the, the uh, American culture and Persian culture. Yeah. Uh, by the way, one piece of uh, celebration that I wanted to add is uh, the night before the last Wednesday of the, the old year mm-hmm. uh, is called, uh, there's an event called Chasha Misuri. Chasha means Wednesday, uh, Wednesday and Sur means uh, fire. Um, and uh, as well as celebration. So what we do is we, we set a fire outside. Obviously, you got to inform the fire <laughs> department. <laughs> and, and everyone uh, gathers around the fire, and you jump over the fire, and you sing a song that oh. has a special meaning. 
If you translate word by word, it would mean that uh, you talk to the fire and say, uh, I'll give you my yellowness and I'll get your, uh, and give me your uh, redness. Uh, I'll give you my sadness, give me your happiness. Basically, yellowness means um, um, disease and sickness, and when your face turns yellow, and redness means um, just uh, healthy and, uh, and being healthy and happiness. And vibrant. That's uh, awesome. I love that. So do you guys um, have like a bunch of families and a bunch of houses come together for one giant bonfire? Or uh, is you it could picnics. do it individually. Picnics. You could do it as a picnic. Yeah. You could do it. As a matter of fact, I'm so devoted, devoted to, to the Persian uh, um, ceremonies and celebration that I have never missed uh, Chosh and Basuri in my life. And one yeah. funny one is <laughs> once I was at the conference and there was a meeting, and sometimes when conferences end, there are meetings like 7 p.m. to 12 a.m., mm. national committee meetings. So at around 9, I remembered that, hey, this is Chosh and Basuri, I can't miss it. So I excused myself, walked out, went to the lobby, to the sh uh, little gift shop, uh -huh. bought the candle, went up to my room, and <laughs> went to the bathroom, set the fire, I mean, light the candle, and jumped over that, sang, and went back to the national meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, that's part of the, tra the tradition. The other thing is, obviously, then comes the spring equinox, the exact second. Everyone has to be sitting at the table. And oh. the funny thing is, they say whatever you do on that second of spring equinox, you'd be doing it frequently for the rest of your year. Wow. And so hopefully you're not so crying. You're <laughs> not, you shouldn't be crying. You shouldn't be in the shower or shaving. You got to be ready and, and dressed up and sitting at the table. And everyone has to be sitting at the table. And when the spring equinox second passes by, you got to look at the mirror and the, and the anything okay. green. Uh, that's usually uh, wheat or, or, or um, other vegetables that are. So, and, so, uh, so as the second goes by, everyone looks at themselves in a mirror? No, 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 the mirror oh. is set on oh, the table. Oh, so I you see, look so at like it and you I look see. at the mirror and you look at the fire and you uh, kiss and hug everyone around the table oh. and this and set up and, and uh, congratulate the new year. Uh, we usually, and, and most versions, I suppose, usually keep the table set that way for 13 days. 13, and so. on the 13th day, which 13 is a, some say a lucky day, some say a lucky number, some say a, a, a bad number. Is, uh, has its own ceremony, which on the 13th day, uh, whatever you planted for the table is, is already uh, dying now. So you take it out to a picnic, and everyone goes out on a picnic, and you throw it into a river, basically. Um, and that's a sign of uh, the fact that this um, plant uh, has collected all the bad things or bad mm -hmm. karma in your house and that's why it died and now you're throwing it into the river and say goodbye to that. And the other um, thing about the 13th day, which is April 2nd or, 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 or 1st, is you tell a joke <laughs> and you fool people, which is exactly the same thing yeah, as uh, April, Fool's April Fool's Day. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is for the for half sin for the table that you, st you start and set up for, for Persian New Year, Spring Equinox, you color eggs and you have it there, oh, which I is very similar eggs. to Easter. Yeah. So that's a now, I don't know which culture got it from the other one, but that, because uh, these little pieces Persians have been- Persians like to try to claim everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you know, we'll, we'll definitely try to claim that on our behalf. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So uh, that's another piece of um, information about that. And one quick thing, I mean, um, sure. uh, I was corrected, so I'm trying to, to so, um, I wouldn't call, call it correct, and we do um, all due respect to everyone else. <laughs> uh, there's uh, the language uh, in English called Persian. Mm -hmm. In Persian, it's called Farsi. It's like uh, Francais, French, or, or, or Francais, which is the the name of the language in different languages. So if I spoke Persian, I would say man Farsi, half misanan. But if I wanted to speak English, I would say I speak Persian. That's the difference. And the, un the other reason is, uh, and I was corrected about that, so uh, by an organization that's sort of a cultural organization or literature organization in the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other difference is Farsi is used in English, but uh, for other dialects, 
uh, the ones other than the ones sp spoken in, in Iran, like the one in Tajikistan is called Farsi, even, even in English, or the one in Afghanistan. But the one in Iran, that dialect is called Persian in English and Farsi in, in Persian, basically. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, right now, everybody, we are going to listen to some Iranian New Mirror music, and then we'll come back and chat with you guys. So uh, here we go. And I have no idea what the name of the song of this is. What's what's the name of the song? Do you know? And we're back. <coughs> that was um, a very interesting uh, rendition of awesome New Year's music. Apparently, that song had all of the dialects that's spoken in Iran. Could you tell us more about that? Uh, I, I mean, the dialects, uh, can I? Go ahead. The, the, yeah, sure. di I mean, the, there are di different dialects of Persian language in there. I mean, uh, like the, the, the one spoken in the capital, which is a is like the one spoken in, in New York, but there are dialects that are totally different uh, north of Iran, Gilaki, or, or, or ancient dialects like Kurdish, or, or uh, Desfuli, Azam is from Desful, or even uh, Shirazi, which is the, used to be the capital of Persia some 2,500 years ago. These, uh, sometimes there the are words that you wouldn't understand if you traveled. But um, now one, one other thing about the uh, about the song um, and the instrument that was mentioned, Sorna, and uh, I guess Roshan mentioned it was Morna. Morna, yeah? Oh, it's actually the same instrument that um, on LDS temples. Yep. There's the angel Moroni that's on top of the temples, that little gold statue you see of the guy with the, the angel with the trumpet. Mor yeah. And it's this, or not trumpet, but this horn, and it's the same horn. Uh, yeah, and, and the reason it's played on, on uh, spring equinox speci uh, specifically is many religions and cultures believe that uh, when every everyone dies, obviously, and uh, later on, when the world is over, um, uh, the Mor uh, Moroni will come and play that instrument, and all the dead people wake up from death, and then the God decides who goes to heaven, who goes to hell, and so on. And on um, spring equinox, all the dead plants and flowers start growing and, and coming out of the ground, which is a symbol of the dead coming back out of the ground. And that's why Moroni or Sorna is played on that specific is, uh, instant. Oh, wow. That's mm -hmm. super interesting. The day, by the way, is called Rastachis, which, which is uh, the, the day of waking up. That yeah. day, and that's that. That instrument is played on Rastachis as well as Spring Equinox, which is Norus. Nice. So, um, uh, whale. Oh. Yeah. Well, I was just going to jump in on on um, uh, piggyback on something that Arvin mentioned on the um, the festival of fire and people jumping over the fire and before all the fire festivities go on. Um, there's something that really does remind me of, of Halloween and that spoon banging, you know, and people bang spoons and pots on pots and pans and they put, uh, they put a disguise on and they go to, uh, from door to door and they ask for a treat. So um, it just very much reminds me of, of Halloween. Mm -hmm. And there are special um, cookies that people make um, and there's special mixed nuts um, uh, or trail mixes that, that people give out um, at that time. And um, Roshan mentioned the, um, the uh, charity and the giving and this is a time when Anybody who comes up to your door, you give something to them. Even you know there are no such things as strangers. Um, you know we were never told about stranger danger, especially on, <laughs> on this night. It was just everyone who travels who comes to your door. Uh, we were told that they're all the holy men travel as beggars. So <laughs> so you're 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 taught to give um, the, uh, on that 
uh, all the time, but particularly at this time of the year. So um, that's the one thing that that is celebrated. And I think the Bonfire Festival is 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 it's it's a lot of fun and it's great. I think the origin of it maybe goes back to when the the um, people wanted to get the fields ready for for planting. So they would pick up all the debris and the weeds and the twigs and all of that, and that would be what they make with the bonfires and 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 um, for the festivities for that. Um, uh, by the way, one other piece of information, <laughs> another, <laughs> another sort of uh, tradition is on the 13th uh, after Nowruz, um, if you're single or if you have a wish, usually the wish is related to finding a new love and, and marriage and this and that, you would go outside, I mean, on, on that picnic day and put a knot on, on, on grass and make a wish uh, to find new love or, or and, and that's another piece of tradition. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, um, for for New Year that I follow, that I, that I you know because I'm you know normal New Year too. But um, the Japanese have a, a, a cultural well, like a, a tradition of when the the new sunrise after of the new year, uh, they make a wish, and I tend to do that. I make a wish on the sunrise on the new year, so it's kind of. Kind of like that. It's well, so fun. We have the Fole Gush too, and I yeah. don't know, um, you know, uh, uh, people make wishes and and um, they sort of, it's like fortune telling. <laughs> and <laughs> nice. they wait, and, um, you know, streets are full of people, uh, especially that's that's something that's done on Charshan Basuri, the Festival of Fire. People make the, the wish, and then they wait until um, uh, a group of people pass them by, and whatever. Um, the conversation is is the answer to your wish. So that's uh, the fortune telling. Um, yeah. Arvin also mentioned about the commonalities in the cultures. I mean, when he, when he was talking about his experience of jumping over the candle, <laughs> and I always have wondered when I came across the the nursery rhyme, Jack be nimble, oh, yeah. Jack be quick. Oh yeah, I was totally thinking that. Yeah, and I was just wondering if if the origin of the two m might be um, something similar. So yeah. I mean, the, the whole celebration is um, of, of the new year. Um, the, the, the visual beauty of the, of the half scene, of the um, candles and the mirror and the grass and the hyacinths and, and all the beautiful <coughs> things. It's just visual poetry, yeah. really. It's, um, it's uh, the whole celebration is, is poetry. It's light, it's life, it's, um, it's beauty. And thus is life in general in Persian culture. Um, even, you know, I know this isn't mean to drag talk about Iran as opposed to Persian New Year, but even in our cult, for my generation of in Iran today, um, culturally the the new music coming out, the, a lot of things have this this beauty and love about them still. And um, I mean, it's quite a contrast from what we see here, but I just kind of wanted to point that out because not only are our events about this beauty and love, but really our culture as a whole, it's all about beauty and love. It's all about beauty, love, and hospitality. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something really important to know about the Persian culture um, and Iran and our holidays. And it just goes well into this conversation. Definitely, especially, you know, uh, hope not to bring a sour note to the conversation because I'm hoping not to but um because you know because I know that uh I think nowadays people especially Americans are still maybe a little timid around people of, the, of um you know Middle Eastern culture who you know they don't spend time thinking about it you know they're just maybe a little shaky so it's important to get you know the messages out there that it is about beauty and love and hospitality and and just celebration and not, you know, just uh, don't be afraid, you know, just communicate. And I, and I think a lot of those stereotypes are um, are out there, but they also are raised upon meeting someone from these cultures, especially Iranian culture, yeah. um, Persian culture. We are very hospi hospitable people. We're very kind people. Um, a lot of things play. It's funny. A lot of people assume that Iran is kind of this place with camels and this and that. And really, Iran, I mean, our cities are much more metropolitan than many of the large cities here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a very interesting culture, and I would encourage anybody listening to look into... Every culture in the Middle East is v vastly different. We are not... Even though we're one region, it's kind of like... Um, 
you know, saying all of Europe is the same. Like, we're <laughs> all so vastly different. But um, all around, all, all the cultures in that area, a lot of a lot of us really do center around these these values. And there is no reason to question a culture based on things that are going on. And yeah, definitely. Well, I think that um, it is two fifty, so I think we are going to send um, send our listener to us listeners off with some music. If uh, anyone wants to learn more about it or or um, be a part of any events going on, do you guys know if any events oh. are up? Um, so we do have an event coming up. Uh, it is going to be um, on May, or sorry, May, wow, on uh, <laughs> March 16th. Um, and it's it starts at 630. It's, it's at the Idaho Ice World. Mm -hmm. um, I am one of the coordinators, so if you would like to come, there there is a, a fee which you could... Um, I, I suppose contact the radio station and they could give you my email address um, to uh, send that information but it's basically uh, ten dollars for students and we do ask that everybody bring um, some sort of potluck thing to share uh, clearly if you're not Iranian don't worry about trying to learn an Iranian dish because <laughs> it's very hard very tedious and it takes a long time um, but you know uh, there will be a lot of Iranian food there and uh, it's it's a cultural event for us really within our community but we always encourage somebody who's interested in learning more about our culture to come and be a part of it and uh, we'd be more than happy to have people so it's at 6 30 at the Idaho Ice World Ice Palace I guess um, on the 16th Awesome. That sounds great. And then um, I will make sure to put up links in my on my Facebook page for ACD, uh, AC and D chat cords so that you guys can find more information. And I think that um, uh, the Arbiter might be following this this uh, pulse station up or something. I'm not totally sure, but I think that they are. So, uh, yeah, it's been great to meet you guys. And thank you guys so much for coming and being a part of my show. And I learned a lot. And I, I really want to see pictures of of the the half scene half scene half scene i really would like to see pictures of the half scene because it sounds just beautiful yeah, and sure. gorgeous mm -hmm. so uh, i think i'm going to send off our listeners with some music and um so up next is the warsaw poland brothers love is stronger than pride uh daft punk's tron, tron legacy is after that and then ace of bass after that you've got um la guns something or other which i don't know i might change might change that in fact i am i'm changing that right now to rem just because it seems Yay. a little bit more positive, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys so much for listening to The Pulse, and um, have a great new year coming March 20th. Noruz Mubarak. Noruz Mubarak. 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 Trying to pronounce things. All right, so thank you guys so much. Any any last words you guys want to say? Thanks for having thank us. Thank you. Oh, thanks for having us. Oh, yeah, always, anytime. And here we go.